Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own homemade compound gin. It's super simple, super easy and it'll only take 5 to 10 minutes. Now before we get into it, a little bit about what types of gin you can make. There's gin infusions, which is adding additional flavouring such as dried lemon peel, any other fruits and aromatics. And there's also actually distilling your own gin, which I find extremely exciting. The one we're going to be making today is compound gin, which consists of a different spirit. So vodka, um, juniper berries to make it taste like gin, and then any additional fruit of your type. Obviously some fruits don't work as well like bananas, because uh, I don't think banana gin would be really that nice. If you want to hear more about really cool things like gin, alcohol, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and put the alerts on and when I have a new video you'll be the first to know. Enough with the preamble, let's actually get on to making this strawberry gin. So go ahead and grab yourself a Brita filter or something of the like and make sure it's nicely cleaned. Then you're going to need some type of vodka. Make sure you get middle shelf or above if you spring for the cheap stuff though, that's completely fine because I'm going to show you a neat little trick where you actually pour your cheap vodka into the Brita filter and it actually distills it and makes it taste a bit better. But how am I adding value? I'm giving you the little secret that you don't just distill it once. You want to actually pour your distilled vodka into its original container and then you want to go ahead and repeat the same process and distill for a second time and your vodka just happened to taste a lot smoother at that point point. and because I'm ever giving we don't stop there we're going to go ahead and distill it for a third time this just ensures you really have something that's drinkable to work with and it does affect the end taste of your gin then go ahead and grab some juniper berries. They are the foundation of any type of gin. You're going to need a pestle and mortar or something that you can crush the juniper berries in. Make sure you crush them lightly. Please don't pulverize it like I did. Then just grab any container you have, preferably something that closes shut quite tightly and also has an airtight seal around it. Then just spoon your crushed juniper berries into the container. I mean, you could do this without crushing the juniper berries. It just means it take a little bit longer to infuse. Remember our handy distilled vodka? We're just gonna pour it in the container up to about an 80% of fullness, just because we're gonna need around 20% of space for fruit. And this will make our gin base. We're infusing juniper separately because different things infuse at different times and juniper is pretty strong. So we wouldn't wanna chuck it in with everything and then struggle later to actually take it out and risk it overpowering our gin. Store it away for 24 hours and when we come back, our gin should have a lovely golden juniper color. So grab a cafetier or some sort of straining device if you have it and we're just going to use this to filter the juniper berries out of our gin. If you really like the juniper taste, you might want to taste it now and leave it for a day or two longer to get a stronger infusion. However, I do suggest you just go ahead and filter it now and then add more juniper once your gin is pretty much done just because you'll get a better balance of the flavors that way. Grab a fruit of your choice, preferably frozen because it means the skin of the fruit is slightly broken and it gives us a better infusion that way. And don't you dare blend or macerate your fruit. It makes it impossible to clarify the gin later. Go ahead and grab a clean airtight container and just fill it up right up with fruit. The more fruit you add, the more full bodied the gin will taste. Now you can add some sugar here. Technically, it will change it to a gin liqueur, but I find that balances and rounds out your final gin. I mean, there are some things where you cannot have one without the other. Blackberry gin, brown sugar, the boys I date, lying. <laughs> Go ahead and just close that container up and give it a good shake before we do anything else with it. This is purely for my OCD and because I like things nicely combined. So go ahead and grab your juniper base and you just want to fill up this container with as much gin as you possibly can. And if you do run low on gin, don't worry, just top it up with any fruit you have. So we're just going to close our container and then give it a really good shake to dissolve all the visible sugar and then we're going to store it somewhere cool and somewhere dark. I'm gonna wait two weeks because this gin will need at least two weeks for the fruit to infuse. Just put it somewhere cold, dark, forget about it, 
and then in two weeks we're going to come back and we're going to sieve it and bottle it. Now you're going to need to bottle your gin finally. So I've opted for these 250ml spirit containers from Amazon and it's nifty because it comes with these really easy to use corks. I've put the link in the description in case you wanted to check it out. Firstly, if you made it this far without drinking your gin, well done. Secondly, what we're looking for is a reversal of colour. So we're looking for our gin to have taken on the colour of the fruit and for the fruit to be a lot lighter and almost a bit white. If your fruit is extremely vibrant and it looks like you put it in yesterday, then you probably should let it age a bit. But for the sake of this tutorial and my sanity, we're going to go ahead and bottle this gin now. Go ahead and grab yourself a strainer or something of the like. A cafeteria can also be used or both. And we're just going to pour our gin carefully into the cafeteria or into a container. And then we're going to put all our fruit into the strainer. This is because we're going to just push down and press it so we get all the juice that's still remaining in the fruit right into our final gin. Once it starts to look like child's play or kids food then it's fine to completely stop straining and take it off. What we've got here is almost our final gin and it's very tempting to drink but we're going to do one final little strain just to get some individual floating bits. You obviously cannot see that because with blackberry gin it's literally opaque and dark but we're going to slowly and firmly push the cafeteria down just to make sure it's strained properly. We're then going to fill up our bottle carefully, and I emphasize carefully, I cannot tell you how much gin I have spilled in this process. If you're a smarter person than I, then feel free to use a funnel because that is almost idiot proof. I wish I'd done that. But fill it up right to the top and just leave a bit of space in the bottleneck because you're gonna need that for when we decide to put the cork in. To close it, you're just going to need something heavy. You don't need a professional corker unless you're using wine bottles. And you just want to lightly tap and gradually tap, tap, tap until it goes in, I'd say, about 60% of the way. Just be mindful not to push it down all the way because if you're giving this as a gift or you're trying to consume it at a later date, it's going to be a ball leg to get out. I like to just turn it upside down to make sure it's safely and securely placed and also just to wet the cork a bit just because I think the cork will expand a bit if it's wet. Could be wrong. And guys, that's it for our homemade fruit gin. I actually tasted it after this video, and I have to say, it is damn delicious. If you're making just a few, think again and make more. You're gonna wanna give this to people. And on that note, if you're thinking of doing this as a Christmas gift, then tune into my next video where I'm going to show you how you can take an ordinary homemade looking gin into something that's really worthy of a gift, and to be honest, you should just give to yourself because you deserve it and stay tuned and hopefully in two weeks two and a half weeks i should be with you and have that video for you then it's been absolutely lovely and until then peace